It's a beautiful, dull, grey, freezing cold late November day here in England. And I'm reminded of a particular type of medieval fruit that you've possibly never heard of that's still not quite ripe. And it has a rude name. What is it? The medlar tree, Mespillus germanica, has been cultivated in parts of the world for over 3,000 years, as far as we can tell, at sort of southwest Asia and southeastern Europe, around that sort of area. It was brought into Western Europe, we think by the Romans, and widely cultivated in medieval times. It appears in an awful lot of monastic records as one of the types of tree that you should grow in your orchard. It was also specified in the 8th century by Charlemagne that it should be grown on his estates and Henry, Henry VIII specified, slightly after the medieval period, specifically specified that it should be planted at Hampton Court. So what is it? Well this is a medlar tree. Very small one, but a medlar tree. The tree itself is quite untidy. It sort of has a bit of a chaotic growth pattern and beautiful leaves, and it creates um, a lovely sight in the garden, but in particular, it was grown for its fruit. It's mentioned by Elfric in the eighth century, an Anglo-Saxon uh, writer who used the term open arse. Yep, open ass is how it was written down, which is, of course, incredibly rude, but was named after particular part of the medlar, which in close-up you can see resembles a certain part of the human anatomy. And that name continued for an awfully long time until oh, 17th, 18th century. It was called open arse. Now, Chaucer uses it in lots of different ways and Shakespeare, after the medieval period, also uses the medlar. The joke continues into the French language, of course, because they have multiple names for this particular fruit. It's called Cul de chien or cul de singe, which is dog's bottom or monkey's ass. So they, they also recognise the nature of the shape of the fruit. I think it's quite a shame because that, that name really isn't very fair. It's a beautiful fruit and it's incredibly useful later in the season. The actual fruit itself isn't ripe until it's rotted. Uh, there was a new term coined around the 17th, 18th century, I think, called bletting. It's a fairly modern term, but in the medieval period it just needed to rot, and it can rot either on the tree, as in this case, and soften, or you can pick it and keep it in muck or straw and look after it. And as a type of dessert, or as a type of sort of a bit of a sugar rush, not really very sweet, but as a bit of a sort of fruity flavour, I think it would have graced many Christmas uh, and winter dinner tables. It's relatively easy to grow as well. Once picked or left to ripen on the tree, the rotting or bletting process seems to take a couple of weeks, one week, two weeks. In this case, in particular uh, right now, it's got very cold very quickly and so the bletting process has speeded up, which is really interesting. So if you leave them in the cold, in the freezing cold, they're ready to eat much more quickly. You can't really eat them when they're unripe. They're really hard. They're like a, the way to describe them is a bit like a cabbage stalk. If you imagine trying to cut into a hard cabbage stalk and eat that, you sort of could do after boiling, but I wouldn't recommend it with medlars. The bletting process makes them sweet. The unusual ripening process of the medlar, of course, didn't go unnoticed by creative writers, even in the medieval period. Chaucer and Shakespeare both comment on them and it commented on in a lot of other ways. The fact that it's not ready to eat until it's rotten conjures up lots of possible metaphors and also its shape conjures up certain sexual uh, metaphors as well. Shakespeare in particular uses the more bawdy side of it. Chaucer in the Reeves prologue writes, and forgive my attempts at the period accent, but if I fare as doth an open airs, 
that ilka fruit is ever lenger the wares till it be roten in mullock or in straw we old men i dread so fair we till we be rotten can we not be ripe what those last two lines mean we old men age like that till we're rotten we can't be ripe he's commenting on aging and how we get to our wisdom years and it's always too late bit of a dark a dark discussion there from him shakespeare on the other hand uses a lot more bawdiness it's in romeo and juliet remember shakespeare's plays were not really high literature in many ways they were designed to entertain a rowdy drunken tavern audience Shakespeare uses medlars in a much more risque way as a metaphor for sexual desire. The open arse name is used in the original, although in some modern writings they use the word medlar because I presume for certain students calling it an open arse is asking for trouble in the classroom. And he also chooses another fruit as a Renaissance euphemism for phallic symbolism, which is the popperine pear, which is particularly long and uh, shaped in a particular way. Uh, and he combines those two in Romeo and Juliet. Oh, Romeo, that she were. Oh, that she were an open arse, and thou a popper in pair. Beautiful writing, but it's also extremely rude, if you think about it. Medlars were also considered to have medicinal use, possibly a little bit in the same way that, you know, eat an apple a day and you keep the doctor away. There's a translation from a presumably ancient uh, piece of work, which then becomes medieval. It's mentioned in about 1607 that uh, they were considered to um, change the guts quite a lot. In fact, the quote is, Eat medlars if you have a looseness gotten. They bind and yet your urine they augment. They have a name best forgotten. It's a bit of a 16th, 17th century doggerel, but it does mention the medicinal properties of medlars. Right, enough talking. Let's actually have a look and eat one of these medlars. So here's one of the medlars itself. It's quite squishy. You could describe it as a bit like a paper bag filled with custard. Um, these are quite cold, but um, it, it, it's definitely squishy. Right, I'm going to, I'm going to cut this open now just to show you. So um, you can see what it's got inside is this gooey apple sauce type of material. Now, there are four or five big apple pip size pips, I guess. Um, they're about twice the size of an apple pip. And obviously try and plant them if you can. You can't really see the apple pips inside them. So this, uh, this is the material. Now I'm gonna just show you it actually it's um it's a bit like apple sauce. It's uh you can see the pips there. I'll plant those in a second. It's actually very pleasant. It's quite astringent. Um I wouldn't describe it in modern terms as particularly sweet, but I think in the medieval period, if you were craving a sort of fruit taste. This would have been really quite nice. It's got a, a sort of tangy, a tanginess to it as well, but I also describe it as a little bit bready as well, weirdly. Um, yeah, very nice. If you can get hold of them, and they're very rare these days, if you can get hold of them, I'd thoroughly recommend them. I might try and um, put them in a pie or something, uh, but they're very, very edible. Genuinely. Hmm. So, Medlars, terrible name, terrible PR, really quite nice fruit, especially at this time of year. Mm -hmm.